Money Press is sponsored by uh, Mohegan Sun. There's a big 50% off sale at the Auto Money Press. But on a lot of selected items, vests and flannel shirts and ties and stuff. And So call them and ask them, 1-800-272-1957. And the coffee is available at ShopRite, Hymer's Brothers Coffee, at most leading supermarkets. And the salsa and chips and stuff, so uh, drive me nuts about all this. So uh, Sid uh, Rosenberg is going to be hosting the Giants pregame show on Sunday at 11.30 in the morning outside the bubble at Giants Stadium. Go out and uh, beat the hell out of Sid. Go out and cause trouble. <laughs> Throw stuff at Sid. Turnover's table. Where's the bubble? What's the bubble? The bubble is uh, where the Giants practice. It's a big practice field, right? Uh, I think it's right outside Gate D right. at Giants Stadium, so. Right over there, we're going to be ready to go on Sunday morning, and I'll be out there, and Carl Banks will be out there, and all the fans will be out there, ready to root on the Giants as they'll get their first win on Sunday against the Packers after last night's loss. A bunch of drunks out in the... A bunch of... The, the worst kind of loser is the person who actually goes out and cooks food in a parking lot at a football stadium. That's the worst kind of loser. 25 hours before the event. It's Good the worst Lord. kind. And gets drunk and sits around with all their fat friends yeah. wearing stupid Giants uniform stuff. Erping in the parking I lot. I mean, it's like some there's some Great. nitwit out here in the newsroom actually had a Jason Seahorn jersey on yesterday. Yep. This is an adult who comes to work at a radio station wearing a football jersey. I mean... If like Eddie Scazzeri, uh, who still, by the way, insists on wearing his idiotic Dan Marino Miami Dolphins jersey, as he did yesterday, if you noticed. Yes, I was, oh, of course, as he did yesterday. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, who are who are these people? Who are these grown men and women, but particularly men, who wear uh, football jerseys? Uh, well, I can I can sort of see to the game, I guess. But I mean, uh, but in their private lives, I mean, just in. Uh, but to work around the home of the sake. office, please. I mean, it's embarrassing. You know, my dad's been cooking out there in the parking lot for about 15 years at Giant Stadium. Comes out there with the jersey ready to go, the big giant sweatsuit, oh cooking God. eggs in the morning. He's a mental in the patient. Absolutely. Yeah, it's my father though. Good morning. I'm Chris Jansen here with Greg Jarrett, and there is a major incident in Lower Manhattan in the World Trade Center, which is in the Wall Street area of New York City. You are looking at live pictures. Apparently, a plane has crashed into one of the upper floors of the World Trade Center. Now, according to eyewitnesses, it appeared that the plane, and we don't know exactly what that plane is, was having some difficulty. It was being described by witnesses as listing back and forth from wingtip to wingtip and it is difficult to tell from this perspective but we are being told that the plane may be embedded in that upper floor of the World Trade Center. It is uh, just right now that we are beginning to get some details in these first pictures from the World Trade Center of course the twin towers there and you can see near the top floors the damage to the building and the smoke billowing from it. Uh, by the way, this is not the first time that a plane has crashed into a building in Manhattan. If I recall correctly, it was sometime during World War II that a military plane crashed into the Empire State Building, killing several people there. But this has just happened a short time ago. The World Trade Center in Manhattan, the southern tip of Manhattan, a plane has crashed into one of the two structures there and appears to be embedded therein. And remember, it is shortly before 9 o'clock East Coast time, so we suspect there would have been a great many people in the building and presumably on those top floors as well. The building's history is uh, full of oddities, you might say, and marvelous accomplishments. But we do want to mention that... Uh, World War II, and here it is, 1945, an Army Air Corps B-25 twin-engine bomber crashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building, and so it has now happened again some 55 years later, this time in the World Trade Center, uh, the two tallest buildings, the Twin Towers, in the southern tip of Manhattan. 
Uh, the World Trade Center, of course, uh, a major area of business uh, in lower Manhattan. They are known as the Twin Towers, and uh, this would have been a time of the morning when huge numbers of people are going to work. Uh, this is obviously largely an office building. Uh, one of the eyewitnesses said this is not a private plane, that uh, according to at least one eyewitness, uh, who saw the plane having some difficulty. It appeared to him to be a large passenger plane. In any case, a plane has gone into the upper floors of the World Trade Center in lower Manhattan. This is, this is the Wall Street area of New York City. Well, one can only imagine uh, what has happened there, both inside the building, to the people who uh, came to work this Tuesday morning uh, before 9 o'clock, and a lot of people do. And not only that, but it is very crowded below on the streets in between and around the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Surely debris came showering down on uh, the people below as well. We do not have any reports of injuries or deaths as yet. Uh, that should be coming to us very, very shortly. But it's it is a scene. It's impossible to believe, however, just taking a look at the scene and knowing the time of day and having been down to the World Trade Center, not only would there be uh, a tremendous number of people who worked in the World Trade Center who were already in their offices, but there are many. Uh, Let's go to WNBC. They have an eyewitness. Let's listen in. Overhead, which caught, caught all of our attention. We looked up. It was making a beeline for the World Trade Center. It was very low, extremely low. Not a big plane like an air, you know, an airliner, uh, but not a tiny propeller plane either. A small, small jet plane. Uh, we we can now see flames coming from the building. It appeared to you that the airplane was directly aimed at the World Trade Center. It did appear that way to many of us that were here on the ground. Yes. Okay. And when it hit, there was a you know. You know, the big boom, a big cloud of smoke, some flames, and then mostly smoke. It just started flaming now. Have you witnessed any people coming out of the building? Have they been able to tell you anything at this point? No, I'm all the way up on 14th Street, so I can't see the building down below. Uh, it was only a, uh, maybe a minute or two before you could hear sirens coming, so they did alert people right away, obviously. but. Uh, you probably have a better fix on how many floors were damaged. It looks like quite a few floors. Yeah, from what we're looking at, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I would say 15 to 18 stories, and there is uh, debris falling off that building yeah, as we see, see. You did see shattered glass raining down after it hit, and, uh, you know, like I said, a big cloud of smoke. Um, but you couldn't tell much more from 14th Street. Now, we had an earlier eyewitness that told us he thought it appeared to be a 737. Your, what you saw was a small, perhaps twin-engine airplane? No, not a twin-engine. It was a jet um, of medium to smallish proportions. Not a big airliner, though. Okay. Um, okay, so it appeared to be a... And, and what... What pro you heard this sound. I'm just trying to understand what happened. You heard a sound. That's what compelled you to look up into the sky. Yeah, you could hear you could hear a jet coming overhead, and it sounded low. So many of us looked up to see what was you know because it sounded so close. We all looked up, mm -hmm. and like I said, it didn't look like it was swerving or out of control. It was going steadily lower. Uh, it was you know definitely going steadily lower, but it wasn't dropping uh, like nose first or anything that would make you think that the plane was in trouble. Right. Which uh, then, of course, raises the question exactly what was that airplane doing and, and how did this occur? Right. Uh, but the airplane, I, the airplane did not appear in, to be in trouble to you. I, I, don't know, I don't know enough about airplanes to know what it should look like, but it wasn't nose down or it wasn't swerving up and down or left and right. It was making a straight, steady decline towards the, the World Trade Center. Uh, Mary, I'm hearing what, so what sounds to be an awful lot of people that are either crying or uh, sobbing or something in the background. That, that's my baby wondering why I'm still standing here. But there are a lot of us who are shaking or in, there with tears coming down our faces because it's mind-boggling to think about how many people are up there who, you know, aren't anymore. Um, exactly. And uh, Mary, again, thank you very much. I, I appreciate your comments with us no this problem. morning. Thank you. And um, I'm certain it was quite a frightening sight to have watched this. Let me reiterate what we think. We have been listening to uh, WNBC interview an eyewitness, and this is a horrible tragedy that has struck in the early morning uh, rush hour uh, period of time. People just coming to work at the World Trade Center. A plane has crashed into the upper floors 
of one of the Twin Towers. This is a major area of commerce in lower Manhattan in the Wall Street area. The World Trade Center complex includes 10.5 million square feet of office space, 300,000 square feet of retail space. It would have been very active already at this time of the morning. It is now just 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, there are 239 elevators, 71 escalators at the complex. This gives you an idea of the enormity of it. More than 40,000 people work there. There are more than 400 firms at the World Trade Center from more than 25 different countries. And on any given day, more than 100,000 business and leisure visitors come to the World Trade Center. Jody Richards works here at uh, MSNBC, happens to be in lower Manhattan right now. Good morning, Jody. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm actually downtown Jersey City on the corner of Grand Street, right on the water, looking straight at it. It's just tons of billowing smoke coming out of the top towers. Uh, you can't really see much of anything, but it really looks like the top of the building is major league damage. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. There's tons of trucks, and, and everything downtown is just looks stopped. Jody, if you can stand by, uh, we want to bring in uh, Lester Holt uh, up sure. here at MSNBC. Yeah. Please stay with us. See Lester, what you can observe for this us. is being described by witnesses, as we understand, as a twin-engine plane. Can you help us out? Uh, let, me, let me tell you what I know about the flight patterns in this area. Uh, right now, you're looking out towards Staten Island from this view. Planes coming into LaGuardia sometimes come over Staten Island. They will go to the east, up the East River. Other times, they will come west up the Hudson, but again, will go either side of the World Trade Center. Keep in mind, though, that there is what's called VFR, visual flight rule space, beneath uh, uh, the, the Trade Center, up and down the Hudson. You'll very often see small, small sets and small planes uh, flying under visual rules up and down the Hudson. Now, we've heard many descriptions of this plane, a twin engine, not quite an airliner. It could, in fact, be a commuter plane. Let's uh, listen in now as it's described from WNBC's Chopper. Can you see down to the street to see what might be going on down there? Are there signs of, of uh, the people that have evacuated the building? Um, what, what can you tell? Can you see anything down there? Or are you simply not close enough at this point? We are simply not close enough right at this point. Uh, we are following the smoke in the air right now. There are several boats and watercraft, as we can see, in the river right now. We'll try to get a better vantage point and see what we can see on the ground. It's a little difficult from the air because the buildings kind of shadow the streets. But no doubt a lot of activity on the ground right now. And um, in terms of the firefighting capabilities, when you get up to this high level, uh, I assume the firefighters have got to get up there and, uh, you know, fight it from inside. Oh. Uh, if you're taking a look now, you can wow. see that we've just had another explosion, and that is considerably lower. And is that in the other building? Is that, that what I'm witnessing? That, that apparently does look like it is in the other building at this point. And that looks to be lower, which means there, um, you know, obviously there are considerable numbers of stories above that explosion that we just saw. Perhaps we can get another look from one of our sky cams that can take a different angle. Yes, you can tell that it now appears that both buildings um, are Back off. suffering some kind of damage this morning. My colleague, um, Glenn Walker, has just joined me here in the studio. And Glenn, um, I don't know if you've received off. any other information, but perhaps you can, again, um, go over what we do know at this point, which is pretty much visual and what eyewitnesses have told us. Well, I would hate to speculate, but um, man, that looks like a completely separate incident right there. I mean, it, this, this building has been the subject of terrorist attacks in the past, and uh, I certainly want to, would want to speculate at this time, but that is a separate explosion. Yes, it is. In the other building. Now, we have tried to get a hold of the Port Authority, which manages the building. We haven't been able to get an answer. Uh, we did call MTA, and the MTA says a subway service as of right now is continuing, so that's not a problem because it's obviously very below, but I imagine that will change very quickly after what we just witnessed. That was a dramatic explosion. Again, it was in the separate tower than the one to where the plane just crashed into about a half hour ago. Uh, yes, and um, again, there was no sign of any airplane close to that explosion. No. All right, we no, are going to uh, re-rack the tape and show you what happened just moments ago, and that was an explosion in the second of the twin towers. And we're going to watch it for ourselves. Yes. 
It appeared as though a second plane coming from behind crashed into the second of the World Trade Center towers. A first plane happened about 15 minutes ago, struck one of the towers in the upper floors, a horrible tragedy, and now, just moments ago, another plane has struck the Twin Towers, of course, the target of previous terrorist attacks. That uh, possibility leaps to the mind again. We are seeing the second Twin Tower, uh, the upper levels, an enormous explosion. It appeared to us, as we watched the videotape twice now, that a second plane had crashed into the Twin Towers. This World Trade Center complex, as it is known, they are twin, known as Lego-type block towers. They are 110 stories. They rise 1,377 feet into the air. They are one of the defining characteristics of the New York City skyline seen from anywhere. And there you see the second plane in the second tower going through, and there is the explosion into the World Trade Center of New York City. Um, this obviously, if it is some sort of terrorist attack, uh, would not be the first. February 26th, 1993 was the day that the World Trade Center uh, was bombed. Um, A violent explosion ripping through the parking garage on that day in the sub-basement levels of uh, the World Trade Center immediately it killed six people and it caused extensive damage and several basement levels resulted in a massive fire that uh, quickly distributed thick black smoke in the upper levels of Greg, the complex's let me interrupt buildings. You. This came from the State Department on Friday. The State Department has released a worldwide caution. Let me read it to you. Now, I'm reading this to you uh, cold. I have not seen it before. It was just handed to me. Over the last several months, the U.S. government has learned that U.S. citizens and interests abroad may be at increased risk of a terrorist action from extremist groups. We will continue to watch this part of the story. Let's listen into the coverage on WNBC. Do you see people that are injured? What, what can no, you no, no, I can't. I'm on the 28th floor. Okay. Yeah, so it's minute to my vision. I really can't see too much. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Arlene, and please get out of that building and Thank seek you. safety. Thank you. I'm leaving right now. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Be safe. We have another uh, another Thank witness, you. Janice Huff, on the telephone. I'm not sure if it's our Janice Huff, but uh, she apparently was a witness to, to the, to the second right. explosion. You hey, saw hey. this? Where are you? No, no, no. Listen, I'm watching TV right now. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can see the pictures that we have of the building, the first building, the one with the tower on the top. And as I'm watching it and you're talking, I see a plane flying behind the other tower and I see it getting closer and closer to the building and I'm thinking is that a plane and it was and all of a sudden I see this explosion in the other tower so there was another plane so there was another plane with a second I mean, I, explosion well, from, from what I am look, looking at on television from the angle that I was looking uh, here's a replay right here I believe when I was watching uh, this and so we have been uh, watching WNBC News' coverage. They saw the same thing we did. A plane, a second plane, coming in from behind and striking directly the second of the Twin Towers. Here it is, and the explosion in a moment. One would assume that these are twin attacks on the World Trade Center by two separate planes, and immediately one uh, would begin thinking about a terrorist attack. Now, one doesn't want to speculate too much, but again, on Friday, the, star the State Department released a worldwide caution about extremist groups, and it said American citizens may be the target of a terrorist threat from extremist groups with links to Osama bin Laden. In the past, such individuals have not distinguished between official and civilian targets. As always, we are taking this information seriously. U.S. government facilities worldwide remain at a heightened state of alert. Now, you'll remember that when the World Trade Center explosion happened back in 1993, uh, this was linked to uh, Osama bin Laden's terrorist network. The World Trade Center has uh, seven high-rise buildings, a shopping mall, several levels of underground parking, and if this was a terrorist attack, it was timed at a, at, at a moment on the East Coast shortly before 9 o'clock 
where there would have been a great many people inside these two buildings. There you see the second attack, the plane coming in, exploding in the second tower. There would have been a great many people inside these two towers uh, who no doubt lost their lives. Not to mention the debris raining down on people below. A very busy area, the southern part of Manhattan during rush hour. We do not have uh, any uh, reports of uh, injuries or deaths, but surely that will be coming to us very shortly. Lester? Lester? All right, what I want to do is take a look at that airplane in slow motion. It, it looks like a jet aircraft. There it is, frozen. Clearly a low-wing airplane. Looks to be a swept wing, which indicates a jet. And it looks like a sizable jet, perhaps an airliner or a commuter jet. Can we roll it just a little bit here? Okay, freeze it right there if you can. And clearly, clearly that is a, a swept wing jet, which means a, a passenger-sized jet of some kind, which leads to all kinds of questions. Now, airplanes, airliners, are on radar. They have transponders that allow the controllers to not only see where the airplane is, the altitude, its flight number. A plane that would be flying in controlled airspace that would not be responding to controllers would be a source of concern, but frankly, there's nothing they can do about it. They could uh, violate the pilot, they could fine him, all those sorts of things, but a determined pilot willing to do something, there is nothing they can do about it. Can we zoom in on the airplane now, uh, digitally? Let's see if we can get a little closer look. But this clearly looks like and I'm just, from this angle, a 737, perhaps an A319 size airplane that looks very much like a, either a 737 or an A320, a, a plane that would carry over 100 passengers. Now, from the direction it's coming, we know Newark Airport is just about uh, 10 miles from the west of this. Uh, LaGuardia is another 10 or 12 miles to the east, but this plane is coming uh, east across the Hudson River as it makes its approach. That is clearly, uh, from, from the indications I'm looking at, is a, uh, uh, a small jet, small airliner-sized jet. Looks to me either an A320 or a 737-size uh, airplane. I I'm able to, of course, make out any markings, an airline or that, but... Uh, uh, again, there is nothing controllers could do if a Maverick pilot decided to leave his flight plan, decided to leave his course, and make a suicide plunge like we have witnessed here. Uh, we don't know. Uh, witnesses who saw the initial uh, hit of the airplane said it was also a twin-engine airplane. Some discrepancies as to the size. Some believe it was a small commuter-sized plane. This plane you're looking at is the one we saw hit the second tower a short time ago. And from every indication in this shot that we have pushed in on digitally here, it is clearly, you see the upward swing uh, of, of the wings. It's a swept wing, a jet design. Uh, two large uh, like high ba bypass engines underneath and there on the left of your screen the explosion as that plane pierced the World Trade Center. We're going to show it to you again now uh, and let you have another look at that attack that occurred just a few minutes ago. This is the, the, the frozen picture that is, as a plane at this point is now coming, uh, uh, judging from the angle we saw from over the west side highway over the Hudson River from New Jersey. There it is. And that was a plane moving quickly, and it appeared to be on a course. Uh, it didn't appear to be a plane out of control, but one that was aiming towards the World Trade Center, and there is the huge plume of smoke. Um, you've got to know that air traffic controllers right now are, are, are scratching their heads trying to figure out where this plane came from, if it was one that they were controlling and suddenly went maverick on them, one that came in from somewhere uh, beneath their radar. As I mentioned earlier, there is what's called VFR traffic up and down the Hudson River. These are usually smaller planes who are, are just looking out for other airplanes, not under positive control, but the big jets are always under control. Greg? Yeah, Lester, we are now just getting word from the Associated Press and Urgent Wire that the FBI is now investigating a hijacking. Also, uh, this from an employee of United Airlines. He says he is hearing from the United Command Center that an American Airlines plane, a 757 Airbus, was hijacked and crashed purposely into the Trade Center. A second plane was then flown into the second tower, which we have been uh, looking at on video replay. There you see the ISO and now the explosion, the second tower, and that happened just minutes ago. I want to repeat again, the FBI, according to the Associated Press, is investigating a hijacking. We now uh, are ha getting information from an employee of United that he is hearing the command center at United 
is investigating an American Airlines plane, a 757 Airbus, hijacked and crashed into the Trade Center. Chris? The White House tells us, by the way, that President George W. Bush is aware of the disaster in New York City. We have not gotten any reaction yet from him or further details, but let's head over to Lester now for more information. Lester? Uh, Greg, I just wanted to clear up. You said 757 Airbus. Uh, that would be two different types. Uh, the Boeing makes the 757. Airbus makes the A320, A319. Very similar looking airplanes, both twin engine, both consistent with that picture uh, we saw there a moment ago. United Airlines operates both the 757 and the A319, A320 jets. Uh, it is impossible from that angle to say, but uh, clearly that is a twin-engine jet consistent with uh, a commercial airliner, the type that, uh, uh, that, that United Airlines operates. Uh, but again, uh, 757 is Boeing, Airbus right. makes the 319 and 20. Lester, let me ask you this question because I'm just getting messaged from uh, one of our employees here at MSNBC who, whose husband, and we hope to get him on the phone, saw this, he said it looked to him like it was a 737. Are those things that could be uh, easily It's It's so mistaken? difficult from the angle. The 737, there's many models. Um, it's a little shorter than the 757, but uh, from the angle we're looking at, it's virtually impossible to tell. My guess is what we saw there was an A320. That's just my guess. Uh, but, uh, Chris, the, the, the bottom In any line... Case, if we're that was talking a about a major commercial A major plane. commercial airplane. Any, any one of those could hold uh, a minimum of 120, 130 30 passengers. The uh, 757 can hold in some configurations as many as 160 airplanes. This is a tragedy any way you spell it. Yes, and uh, it is unclear from the information we're getting from the employee of United uh, whether or not the hijacking occurred with passengers on board or whether the plane uh, was simply uh, hijacked with pilots or, or maybe it was empty when it was hijacked. Unclear, but the command center at United indicating through an employee that they're uh, suspecting a hijacked American Airlines plane. And again, we don't know what kind it is, but uh, Lester, you've been eyeballing it, crashed purposefully into the Trade Center. And we know yep. that American Airlines operates uh, a, a recent, a new operator of 737-800 aircraft, one of the newer versions, and again, that's consistent uh, with, the, with the angle we saw there of the same type of airplane. Again, this is, uh, a, I don't know what flight pattern they were using today, but up and down the Hudson is a frequent flight path for planes uh, coming to LaGuardia Airport. All right, let's take a look again because uh, first we saw there was an explosion in the first tower of the Twin Towers. This is the second one. You can see the plane highlighted now. It goes behind the second tower and then you see obviously it crashes in and there is a large explosion that happens in the second tower of the World Trade Center complex. These are twin block towers, both 110 stories. Uh, 1,377 feet high. NBC's Jim McLeshewski is at the Pentagon for us right now. And Mick, what have you been able to learn? Are we waiting for Mick to get hooked up? All right, we're going to wait for Mick to get hooked up. And while he is, let me tell you once again that uh, on Friday, the State Department released a worldwide caution, which read in part, over the last several months, the U.S. government has learned that U.S. citizens and interests abroad may be at increased risk of a terrorist action from extremist groups. In addition, we have received unconfirmed information that terrorist actions may be taken against U.S. military facility or establishments requested by U.S. military personnel. However, it went on to say that in the past, groups like that led by terrorist Osama bin Laden have not distinguished between official and civilian targets. As always, according to the State Department, we are taking this information seriously. U.S. government facilities worldwide remain at a heightened state of alert. And we heard from an employee of United that an American Airlines plane, we're not exactly sure what the model of it is, but a large passenger plane, and we could see it as a second one, went into the tower was hijacked and crashed purposely into the World Trade Center. A second plane then flew into the second tower. In Washington, officials uh, have indicated the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking before the crashes. That would appear to dovetail with the information we are getting from a United employee that perhaps an American Airlines uh, jet had been hijacked.
Uh, no immediate reports of injuries or fatalities in the twin disasters. It happened before 9 a.m., but surely there are. Uh, Joe Cantamesa joins us on the phone. He's been a guest with us many times before, but he is former lead investigator for the World Trade Center bombing back in 1993. Joe, let me get your reaction, your observations to what's happening right now in Lower Manhattan. Well, clearly this is a tragedy, but uh, more than a tragedy, this is an outrageous crime that uh, will clearly be uh, examined and worked uh, like no other in history. What is your first impression? Uh, should, should we put anything into this worldwide caution that was released by the State Department on Friday that named Osama bin Laden? Well, I think absolutely. I mean, this is such a high-level attack at this point. Uh, I think only uh, serious resources could have really brought about some kind of a criminal act of this type. And uh, the questions that will be asked immediately and the investigation that will follow will certainly be uh, who knew about it, uh, where was it planned from, and of course, what is the investigative course of action. What will be the first places, in addition to Osama bin Laden, that investigators are likely to look, Joe? Well, clearly, every possible uh, source from every terrorist group is going to be closely examined and is probably happening as we speak. The question is, what bit of information has been overlooked, if any? and what new information can be picked up uh, in a timely fashion so we can act on this uh, you know, without any hesitation. When the World Trade Center bombing happened, remind us, Joe, uh, did we learn that there had <coughs> been signs, had there been warnings, or did it come out of nowhere? Uh, it, uh, there were small signs, but nothing that came together because if you might recall, the actual domestic terrorism threat was thought to be so low that even resources were being reallocated away from terrorism. Uh, that, of course, uh, spooled things up, and, and the investigation and the people, you know, were added to it. Uh, this has, however, been now at a time where heightened security and heightened awareness has been throughout the world, and the questions are going to be what information and what investigative agencies <laughs> have any information and you know what else may be about to happen is really what concerns me the most where do you even begin to start with an investigation like this and and secondarily uh, concern about other attacks well the, the very first thing that's going to be taking place and I'm sure it's happening as we speak is the uh, the FBI and all of the intelligence agencies are going to absolutely open up their communications lines and determine what, if any, information is shareable and who knows what about anything going on around the world. If you recall, after the World Trade Center bombing, there was the follow-up case of the blind sheikh and his crew that was going to have multiple targets, the bridges, tunnels, and buildings, uh, while the World Trade Center may in fact be you know, a significant symbol within the New York City and the world community, there are many, many other vulnerable targets that stand uh, r at risk at this point, and they have to determine in the shortest amount of time what other credible risks, if any, are out there so precautionary measures or investigative intervention can take place. Let me interrupt for just a moment to uh, give you a couple of uh, updates on the situation. A senior government official has said that the, uh, the agency, the FBI, is pursuing reports that one or both of the planes were hijacked and the crash is the result of a suicide mission. That comes on the heels of last Friday's warning from the State Department about possible terrorist attacks in, and in specific reference to Osama bin Laden. Now we are also learning that N through WNBC that airports and the Lincoln Tunnel have been closed. It says airports, plural. I don't know if that means all three of the New York City airports. I would presume it does. That would be Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK Airport. Uh, the Lincoln Tunnel, which uh, extends from New Jersey to Manhattan, is closed. President Bush appears to have canceled his events. And let me just get in here for a second. Yes, he will be making a statement shortly and then depart for Washington, D.C. from Florida, where he was down there speaking about his education plan. So the president uh, has quickly canceled his event. He will make a statement shortly. We'll carry it live. He'll then make his way to Washington, D.C. In the meantime, all of the New York City airports have been shut down. The Lincoln Tunnel has been closed. 
in the aftermath of what happened in the last half hour, and that is two planes that appear to have crashed deliberately into the twin towers of the World Trade Center. A horrible tragedy. We have standing by on the phone uh, Joe Cantamesa, former lead investigator for the attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. Joe, if you'd continue to stand by, but just to set this up for people who are just joining us, let's go back over to Lester Holt to explain exactly what unfolded just a short time ago. Lester? When we went on the air at 9 o'clock, uh, one tower was already burning, and then after a few minutes, while we were all watching live, another airplane appeared in the picture. Let's punch up, if we can, that shot, and I'll give you an idea of exactly what happened here. Uh, this is the other airplane. I'm going to tell us right here. Can we punch that up full? Okay, we're going to try and get it up here in a second. But, uh, and there it, okay, we're rewinding. But it was an uh, airliner. There it is. That one right there flies directly into the other tower that had previously been untouched right through the tower. The airplane, if we can go back to that frozen shot, is clearly a commercial airliner of some sort. Uh, it has all the telltale marks of a commercial airliner, a swept wing, uh, two big engines slung underneath. It is very difficult to tell what kind of airplane that is, but clearly the big high bypass, those big fat engines under each wing, that is a commercial airliner. NBC's Andrea Mitchell, our chief foreign affairs correspondent, joins us now from Washington with more information. Andrea, what do you have? Mr. I've just talked to a top U.S. official who tells me that their early reports are that at least one of those planes was a hijacked American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles. That's one of the two planes. This same official says that there was no uh, no terror alert other than the usual worldwide caution. They had no warnings on bin Laden or other types of terror alerts coming into our intelligence community. But a senior U.S. official says that they are early reports, and we should caution that early reports in these kinds of incidents are often incorrect. But this early report coming to a top U.S. official is that at least one of the two planes was a hijacked American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles. Lester? Uh, we should say American Airlines operates uh, 737s and 757s, both of which might seem similar to what we see there. Andrea, tell us there's got to be a game plan of the U.S. government for something of this magnitude. What is kicking into the works right now as we speak? Primarily the FBI. This is the kind of operation that would be immediate response from the FBI. Now, you know after the World Trade Center bombing some years ago that New York created, uh, to some criticism in fact, but Mayor Giuliani created an emergency response center and spent a great deal of money. There is an emergency center in New York City. There have been drills. Now, many cities in the country, including New York, have not passed all of their drills, but there have been emergency response teams recently reorganized within the past year to try to centralize the emergency response mechanism so that it is not as diffuse. There were so many different agencies that would respond uh, to the possibility of bioterror, to any kind of chemical alert. So what they discovered is that the big effort by the Clinton administration to respond to these kinds of things was not up to snuff according to preliminary reviews by the new administration, and they were trying to streamline that approach. In fact, uh, one of the top officials in charge of anti-terror responses domestically was moved sort of sidelined and a new team within the NSC was being created. And one of the things we should point out is that America is virtually defenseless to a maverick or a hijacked airplane. We still have primarily Air National Guard units, air defense units based on the uh, coasts of the United States to look for intruders, drug intruders, uh, uh, bombers, other airplanes that may try to penetrate U.S. airspace, but they are not geared up to, to deal with a threat that may come from within U.S. airspace, which may be the case here, and even if they were were aware of it, if these planes were in fact carrying passengers, as that report would indicate, they would be defenseless to do anything about it. Uh, we, have, exactly. uh, we have looked at this, this shot over and over again, and it, this plane appears to be under complete control and aimed directly uh, at the Trade Center. Let's uh, put up that shot again now, if we can give you a better idea of the airplane that we saw. This was the second attack, and here it is. Clearly uh, guiding directly. Them, I have to go back. Clearly guiding directly into that tower. Uh, these are planes that have two cockpit members usually: the captain and the uh, first officer. Uh, the cockpits are locked. 
Uh, you, we all know about metal detectors and all that sort of thing, but if someone poses a threat, uh, you know, presents a weapon, threatens a weapon, who knows what could happen on an airplane here. Uh, and the question is, you, you look at this and you wonder who could possibly uh, uh, fly an airplane directly into a, a building, even a, a, a cockpit member under some sort of duress. You wonder how difficult it would be to, to, to aim a plane directly, and there it is. Uh, and I want to point out what we were seeing here that made it clear to us that this was a uh, that this was a uh, airliner there's two engines there see the engine slung beneath the wings that is a, a typical layout of a commercial jetliner and there the wings sweep back there i've kind of messed up the picture president bush is speaking let's listen education i do want to thank the folks here at uh, at the booker elementary school for their hospitality uh, today we've had a national tragedy uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. The indication we are getting is that the president will get on a plane and head immediately to Washington, D.C. His events canceled. In case you're just now joining us, planes crashed into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers minutes apart just a short time ago. A horrific scene of explosions and fires that have left gaping holes in the 110-story buildings. Uh, Joe Cantamesa is a uh, former lead investigator for the attack on the World Trade Center back in 1993. And now we are uh, hearing confirmation, Joe. Uh, it's coming, I, I'm sure, as no surprise to you from President George W. Bush that this is an apparent terrorist attack. Well, uh, as uh, he points out, it is. Uh, I think uh, right now everyone's a little subdued. They want to get their resources into full swing right now. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, to identify any other immediate and potential threats. I think probably the best uh, news that I heard is they have actually locked down part of the city, closed uh, the tunnel, and uh, suspended traffic. I mean, what happens... Uh, you know, in the time that immediately follows this, this terrible tragedy is uh, going to be pretty critical to the investigation and how things unfold. Are there any number of organizations out there with the scope, Joe, to pull off this type of attack? Um, if it was a single incident, I would say there probably are a half a dozen that might have the resources or the drive to accomplish uh, an act of this type. To see multiple uh, closely coordinated, I think that probably limits us to uh, one or two uh, highly probable uh, sources of that information, and I don't think there's going to be any surprises as this investigation unfolds. And uh, obviously one of those would be the terrorist network of Osama bin Laden. What can you tell us about it? Well, clearly he is the uh, most aggressive, best funded and uh, probably best organized of all of the groups uh, around the globe. And his uh, interest, focus, and rhetoric has clearly, uh, uh, you know, supported this particular type of an act. And uh, I would say that that is more likely than not uh, where we're going to wind up investigatively. And uh, for our viewers who are unfamiliar with Osama bin Laden, he is one of the CIA's most wanted men, a hero uh, for many young people in the Arab world. But he has been indicted for the deaths of more than 200 people has been called the most serious threat to U.S. national security. He appears uh, as though he is always poised to strike again. Immensely wealthy man uh, and a very private man. He has been uh, granted a safe haven by Afghanistan's ruling Taliban movement. 
Uh, and during his time in hiding, he has called for a holy war against the United States and specifically for the killing of Americans and Jews. He is reported to be able to rally anywhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 fighters for his terrorist cause. He is suspected of helping set up uh, an Islamic training center, uh, in fact, several of them, to prepare soldiers uh, to fight in all parts of the world, in particular against the United States. Uh, Joe, what can you add to that description of Osama bin Laden? Uh, I think that's a pretty uh, clear uh, and, and very accurate. Uh, while he is, uh, again, organized, he's been very good at being elusive. He has great protection, and uh, money can buy a lot of protections. However, I think we're going to see some unprecedented resources put forth now to determine if, in fact, he is responsible and whatever else uh, may be on the agenda. And where are the other countries, what other governments are likely to be able to provide us the most significant help if it turns out that this may have been a terrorist act by Osama bin Laden? Um, there are several, and I really wouldn't care to get over the details that I might be familiar with for fear that I might violate some uh, something that I uh, would not care to. Uh, there are, just suffice it to say that uh, the Western world has been all uh, working actively uh, to identify and locate him as well as uh, identify the components of his organization. He is very elusive, moving from mud huts and tent cities and caves at least three times a week, taking other precautions. The U.S. Uh, tried at one point in time with uh, satellite surveillance to uh, launch an attack on one of his camps, hoping he was there. It turned out he was not. Joining us now on the telephone is Mary Schiavo, who is the former Inspector General of the FAA and NTSB, excuse me, and an MSNBC analyst, aviation analyst. Mary, I want to play the videotape once again for our new viewers who are just now joining us of what appears to be a swept wing plane, a commercial jet, flying into the second tower, striking it, and there you see the massive explosion, a horrific scene there. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, aside from the horror and sadness and shock, my thoughts are also one of, of you know, extreme outrage for a couple of reasons. One, we have placed so much of our uh, uh, security and our prevention measures for terrorist attacks on aviation in this country on what we call risk and threat assessments, which are performed by the FBI. And I worked in uh, aviation security, uh, you know, very vigorously for years, and we always went back to the FBI threat assessments, which said that the risk of domestically staged aviation terrorism was very low. And for that reason, we did not put the resources into the kinds of security measures we are really capable of doing in our aviation. And this proves that over the past several years, that was a very uh, complacent attitude, and it was wrong. And this is um, literally going to change everything about how we do aviation. We now have horrible, horrible, tragic evidence that it is possible to stage perhaps the worst act of aviation terrorism ever in the United States on domestic soil, on and, a domestic flight. And Mary, I mean, how is it possible uh, within minutes that two planes could be hijacked uh, and that is apparently what the FBI is very seriously looking at and we are getting reports that American Airlines plane may have been one of them hijacked. How is that possible? It's possible because we place uh, a lot of our, uh, our security on these risk assessments and the risk assessments have said it's not possible to do it in this country so what we do is we tolerate pretty much rather open coming and going at our airport and with our aviation on the trust that we don't think it will happen here. And that has been a terrible shortcoming, which many people have criticized for the past several years. And the way it happens is we allow it to happen, quite, quite frankly. And this is so outrageous, particularly if the reports of a warning are true. This has absolutely a shades of the Pan Am 103 tragedy, where there were warnings, many people discounted them, but at least the embassy personnel got Mary, warnings for that one. Let me interrupt you, if I may, and please stand by. We're going to join WNBC's uh, coverage right now as we see the thick uh, brown and black smoke billowing from the Twin Towers. A few moments ago, like there was an explosion of some kind here at the Pentagon. 
Uh, we're on the E-ring of the Pentagon. Uh, we have a window that faces out toward the Potomac, toward the Kennedy Center. We haven't been able to see or, or hear anything after the initial blast. I just stepped out in the hallway. Security guards were hurting people out of the building. And I saw just a moment ago as I looked outside, a number of construction workers who have been working here have taken flight. They're running as far away from the building as they can right now. Uh, I, I, I hear no sirens going off in the building. I see no smoke. But the building shook for just a couple of seconds. The windows rattled. And uh, security personnel are doing what they can momentarily to clear this part of the building. Again, uh, I, I have no idea whether it was part of the construction work, uh, whether it was an accident, or what is going on. We're going to try to find those details and get them to you as soon as possible. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, one intelligence official here in the building said when he saw what appeared to be the coordinated attack on the World Trade Center, his advice was to stay away from the outside of the building today just in case. Now again, nobody has any indications uh, of exactly what happened, but it appears that there has been some kind of, it felt like a small blast of some kind. Uh, again, the window shook, uh, the, the building shook, the windows rattled, and people, if uh, I'm looking out the window now, and, uh, and the construction workers are still keeping a good... Oh, I'm sorry. The construction workers are still keeping a distance. That's all I can see. Uh, and I see no other extracurricular security activity right outside. But to get more information, I'm going to have to break away and, and walk down the hallway okay. and see what it is exactly that happened here see, just a few moments ago. Mick, see what you can find out. Please be careful and let us know what's going what on. What appears there. to have Meanwhile, been a twin terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, two planes minutes apart, deliberately crashing into the upper floors of the World Trade Center on the southern tip of Manhattan. The uh, New York Stock Exchange is closed. All airports in New York are closed. The Lincoln Tunnel is closed. The Situation Room uh, is now the focus of attention uh, in the nation's capital. The president on his way back from Florida to Washington. Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor, and other top officials now heading to the Situation Room at the White House. Chris? President George W. Bush was in Sarasota, Florida. He was reading to children in a classroom when he was uh, whispered into his ear by his chief of staff, Andrew Card, about what had happened at the World Trade Center. A short time later, he appeared on national television calling this an apparent terrorist attack. Exactly now happened. these are the pictures the picture right now outside of the According Pentagon. To one US Army Let's listen to Jim Mikluszewski, our Pentagon correspondent. In a full trot. He said that uh, it appears that a bomb was detonated uh, at the heliport. The heliport is a helicopter landing area right next to the uh, Pentagon. Uh, just adjacent to the E-ring. Uh, the offices nearest the, the, uh, the uh, heliport area uh, are U.S. Army uh, Reserve uh, officers uh, and, and the Army Reserve uh, our offices are located there. Uh, but as you can see, it appears to be uh, a pretty significant blast. Uh, to give you some perspective, we are almost on the opposite side of the building, the world's largest office building. And as I reported to you, we could feel the building shake and the windows rattle. And as I was in the hallway just a few moments ago, uh, I could smell uh, uh, an acrid kind of smoke, uh, the kind of almost what you'd smell uh, when a uh, fluorescent light goes bad, that kind of ballast smell. Uh, and uh, authorities are clearing the building. I don't know if you can hear the sirens outside right now, uh, but uh, it appears uh, that in what ha I think people uh, here in the building are already describing as a highly sophisticated, coordinated attack, not only against the World Trade Center, uh, but against the, the Pentagon and U.S. military right here in Washington. Tell me again, I, I, I worked at the Pentagon as well, and, and I, it is a huge building. I mean, it's miles and miles of, of offices. At what location did this seem to have uh, detonated? It's at, the, it's at the heliport, the uh, heliport, which is, uh, as, as, you, as you sit in the Pentagon, you have the Potomac River and Washington, D.C. on one side, and the heliport 
is located almost exactly on the opposite side of the building, along one of the highways. Easily accessible, uh, even though that they've increased security here significantly at the Pentagon within the past couple of years. Mick, uh, that area. I want to mention to you, Mick, that we are hearing again unconfirmed reports that this was the result of a plane crashing in the area as well. I have no idea, Katie. Uh, all I know is that uh, of people who were in the building who came running from that part of the building thought it was a bomb of some kind. This is uh, in it, Sarasota, it, Florida, President to, George uh, W. Bush Chris about Brown, to uh, board Air Force in. One heading back very quickly to Washington, canceling all of his events there, and he will be heading over to the Situation Room uh, with top officials, including National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. There you can see uh, people hurrying back up into Air Force One. And we are reading on the Associated Press wires that the West Wing of the White House has now been evacuated. The West Wing of the White House. Uh, let's go back and listen to the continuing description at the Pentagon by Jim Mikloshevsky. Evacuated from the Pentagon? Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's given us the official word yet, uh, but uh, I think that's probably a safe bet. Uh, thank goodness that was a helicopter that just flew by. I'm just a little nervous right now when you hear aircraft go past, but uh, they have, uh, in fact, evacuated that portion of the building. Usually they have sirens that go off in the building alerting you to the fact that uh, it's time to get out. I haven't heard those yet, uh, but just judging by the pictures, uh, it's, it's clear that that part of the building uh, uh, that is not damaged at least has been evacuated. Like I said, in the hallway, uh, it was pandemonium. Uh -huh. People were rushing from their offices, rushing outside. And you're in your office fr at the Pentagon right now, Mick, reporting I, to us? I am in the office, but I'm at the opposite side of where this uh, crash occurred. All right, why don't you see if you can gather some more information. Please, again, be careful, Mick, and we're okay. going to go to Matt, who's going to be talking with Jamie Gangel. All right, yeah, Katie, thank you very much. I'm joined by... The Tom White Rose. House and the Capitol in Washington, D.C. are now being evacuated. We have confirmation that in light of what looks to be a series of attacks against uh, public facilities in the United States, including U.S. government facilities, two plane crashes into the t World Trade Center, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, and then just a short time ago, uh, uh, an Associated Press reporter saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the Pentagon. Smoke is billowing out of the Pentagon, and now the West Wing of the White House, the White House, and the Capitol are being evacuated. We are also getting word that one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. This according to a U.S. official and he cited as evidence of that a transmission from the hijacked plane, one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center shortly before rush hour or during rush hour this morning, shortly before nine o'clock the southern tip of Manhattan, the World Trade Center, which, as you see there on the right-hand side of your screen, still continues to burn thick black smoke billowing up above. Uh, we saw, in fact, uh, live on television, the second plane crash into the World Trade Center second tower. We have former Governor Mario Cuomo from New York on the phone. Uh, I if you could hold on for one second, Governor, uh, we are just getting word from the FAA that all planes across the United States have been grounded. The Federal Aviation Administration is grounding all planes across the United States in the wake of terrorist attacks, apparent terrorist attacks, and continuing terrorist threats. In addition, the White House and the Capitol in Washington, D.C. have been evacuated. And you can see the picture now, uh, the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan, both apparently the subject of terrorist attacks, separate planes flying in to those towers less than an hour ago, and a third plane flying into the Pentagon just minutes ago. That you can also see to the left of your screen, smoke billowing. Again, former Governor Mario Cuomo of New York is on the phone with us. Governor, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, let me just get your reaction at this point. Same as every other American, it's a terrible act of uh, uh, barbaric terrorism. 
Uh, it's frightening in many ways, uh, recalling the previous attack on the World Trade Center. One of the difficult, uh, the immediate problem, obviously, is to put out the fire, literally. So, uh, try to deter any other uh, acts of uh, terrorism that are planned for about this time. Uh, do what is necessary immediately, but longer range. The difficulty here is probably this is more difficult to deal with this kind of terrorism than any act of any nation uh, which might be alien to you and drop a bomb on you, because you can fight a nation. This won't be national. This will be individuals. Maybe they'll never even be identified as associated with any nation, and therefore it's harder to deal with. Also, I would hope that at one point, at least we discover from the terrorists what their grievance is, because you can't have enough FBI's and enough police and enough uh, National Guards to defend yourself against these attacks. It's impossible. What you have to do is deter the hate, deter the provocation, find out what the cause is, and attempt to deal with that. But unless the terrorists identify at least the cause they're seeking to serve. This will be tremendously difficult, if not impossible, to deal with. We are, Unless we know why they're doing it, we will not be able to prevent it. We are just hearing, Governor, that the Pentagon, in addition, has been evacuated, so we add that to the list of evacuations, it's, it's, uh, the can, White House and the Capitol the, building. See, the dimensions are already enormous, and, and they may grow worse, but the problem will not change. The problem is these are terrorists driven by hate and perhaps even, perhaps even a speculation, a religious ardor that says they can save their souls by doing this. You cannot protect yourself perfectly against them. And so we must ascertain what the cause is. What is it that's driving them to do it? And can the cause be dealt with? Probably this will be a greater challenge to our intelligence and our ability to be diplomatic and intelligent about negotiation than it is a challenge to our strength as a military power. The FAA is telling us that the planes that are already in the air will continue to their destinations, but all other planes in aerospace above the United States have been grounded. Uh, Governor Cuomo, I understand um, that uh, your successor, uh, George Pataki, is in New York City right now. Um, there are a number of state offices, aren't there, Governor, in the, oh, yes, in the Twin my Towers? Office my office and and uh, i i think the governor moved his office out of the world trade center governor pataki but my office was there and i think there are still some some other offices there but not as many as there were when i was governor air yes. force one is uh, now leaving sarasota florida on its way back to washington dc but uh let me just read directly the bulletin from associated press the white house was evacuated today after the secret service received credible threat of a terrorist act against the presidential mansion and residence. It has been evacuated. The Pentagon struck, apparently according to one eyewitness, a reporter, by a plane. A large plane is now burning. It has been evacuated. Two planes uh, deliberately struck, it appears, the World Trade Center, which still burns at this hour. New York City has essentially been shut down. The uh, Lincoln Tunnel is closed. All New York airports are closed. And now, of course, all plane flight in the United States has been stopped. Those in the air will continue to their destinations. We continue on the phone with uh, former New York Governor Mario Cuomo, who was governor at the time of the previous attack on the World Trade Center, the bombing, back in 1993. Uh, if you can hold on for just one second, we want to listen in, Governor, to Jim Mikloszewski, uh, who is reporting from the, the area of the Pentagon. The Pentagon, again, has uh, been evacuated. The second floor buckled upward, and then the third floor above him actually collapsed downward. Uh, the scene on the other side of the building, as it's being described to us, uh, there are people being removed on stretchers. Security forces are evacuating the building right now. And, uh, and according to the officials uh, uh, here at the Pentagon, 
uh, they still don't know exactly what it was, but as you reported, Katie, eyewitnesses reported that, in fact, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And, Mick, any idea, I, I, I wasn't quite sure if you said this, about the number of people who might have been hurt or worse in this? No idea at all, Katie. As you know, having worked here on any given day, this is a small city, 25 to 30,000 people may be working here at any one time. Uh, that portion of the Pentagon, by the way, uh, had just been remodeled and just reopened. Uh, if the crash had occurred just a few months ago, uh, that section of the Pentagon would have been uh, virtually empty. Uh, but at this time of day, uh, early morning uh, or mid-morning, the Pentagon's very busy. Uh, it's impossible to say uh, how, many, uh, uh, how many casualties there may be. Uh, but uh, there have been uh, a, a, a large number of people cited being removed on stretchers. Uh, and again, uh, the, uh, as, as one uh, uh, survivor said, uh, the floor just buckled up under him and, and, and the roof caved in on him. All right, Mick, thank you very much. We want to move a couple of miles away from you right now to the White House where Bob Kerr is standing by. And, Bob, we understand that building has now let been me evacuated. Just, let me that just read uh, while we're listening to Jim McLeshesky, another eyewitness, Paul Begala, Democratic consultant, uh, was near the Pentagon, and uh, he said this, is to quote, it's a huge, it was a huge fireball, a huge orange fireball uh, at the Pentagon. Uh, another witness uh, told him a helicopter has exploded, but... The best information we're getting is from an associated reporter uh, who said, quote, I saw the tail of a large airliner. It plowed right into the Pentagon. There is billowing black smoke. And, of course, there you see it on the television screen. Meantime, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center continue to burn at this hour. Uh, ambulances dispatched to the scene, firefighters, people are being treated in nearby hospitals. Let's look again at the videotape as we were watching the first tower burn. Here is the second plane and there is the explosion into the second tower of the World Trade Center. A horrible uh, scene of devastation and fire. Eyewitnesses on the ground and it was rush hour uh, describing pandemonium, panic, people unwilling to go out into the streets because so much debris and fire showering down on the streets below. Uh, Governor Mario Cuomo, do you remain on the phone with us? We no longer have Governor Mario Cuomo on the phone, uh, but we do have Ashley Banfield, um, uh, of course, here at MSNBC and, and anchor here. Ashley, are you still in Manhattan? I'm in Manhattan, Chris, and I'm just walking southward towards the uh, World Trade Center. It's just an incredible sight. The streets of Manhattan are chock full of people who are stopped where they exactly where they were in the middle of their commute, standing, gaping, and looking at this site. It is unbelievable. Emergency vehicles all throughout Manhattan, not only Midtown, but down near Chelsea now, where I am, have been streaming by us at every every couple of uh, seconds in intervals. Ambulances are heading by me now. A lot of the vehicles are also unmarked, looking like FBI vehicles heading towards the World Trade Center as well. Not only that, but we stopped by one of the hospitals, St. Vincent, which has been cordoned off. I can only guess possibly waiting for victims to be caught northward up 7th Avenue. The traffic has also all been stopped heading south down 7th Avenue. I haven't had a chance to see any of the other north-south uh, thoroughfares, but I'm assuming that they are also tracked. Um, we were down in the uh, subway trying to try at least take the subway to get down downtown to the, to, the, to the Wall Street area and World Trade Center area. And the subway announcer uh, came over the loudspeaker saying due to a police investigation that subway traffic will be stopped between a certain area, so most of the people in the subway weren't able to get downtown either. It's really quite bizarre. Passing through Times Square, hundreds of people are gathered, staring up at the television screens in Times Square and listening to what's going on and listening to the coverage, watching the pictures. A woman walked by me just a Ashley, few seconds ago Ashley, can you hold crying. on one second? We'll let you catch your breath. We want to go to Walter Perez of WNBC. First, Marna Ringel, and Marna, you work across the street. Tell me exactly what you saw on the street, and as you looked up, what you saw, because you said you saw the second one, am I correct? No, I didn't see the second one. I actually was coming out of the building, and there was maybe about 30 or 40 people at the bottom of One World Financial covered in blood. I did not expect that at all, and I work for Lehman in one right here, and a gentleman that I work with was on the telephone. He said, what was that? I said... I, you know, he thought it was thunder. I looked over, screamed, it's a bomb, because I saw a piece of the building flow down, and I think I scared my entire floor because I can scream pretty loud, and it was 
pretty bad. Now, you mentioned that you saw people on the road outside of the building. Explain that scene. I, I saw um, there's maybe about 30 or 40 people uh, covered with bandages and blood. It looks like a lot of them were either on the floor of one of the exchanges. There's actually, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> We're not sure exactly what happened, but it was another explosion on the far side of one of the buildings from where we're standing. The, ver the, the reverberation and another explosion on the right-hand side. Another building has gone. Another building has gone up on the right-hand side of the road. People are now running down the street. We're not sure if that was another explosion or if that was advanced de debris. Joining me also is Jim Plant. Jim, you're also a witness of what happened. Tell me exactly what you saw from your vantage point across the street. Uh, I was just across Liberty and, uh, and West here, and I saw the second plane hit the uh, uh, Tower 2. It looked like a 737. It uh, hit a glancing blow, it didn't hit it direct. I don't know where the rest of the plane went, uh, but it went in, fireball came out, and it hit lower than the first uh, plane, which hit uh, the upper floors. Jim, thank you very much. At this point, as you can it tell, it does appear that there has been a third explosion in the area happened. of the World exactly Trade Center. Think. There was first one plane that hit one of the Twin Towers, a second plane, each about one hour ago, and now a third explosion. Ashley Banfield is in Manhattan. Ashley, did you see or hear anything just God. moments ago? Oh, my God, Chris. This is incredible. I tell you, I, I'm looking right at it. I'm... What are you seeing, Ashley? Well, I saw the explosion for one. Could you feel it? Everybody, I, I can smell it. Uh, everyone around screamed at the time that it happened. It's just unbelievable. I can't see that it's another building. It looks almost in the same, same position as the second bomb or the second explosion. But it, it's what, unbelievable. What's the scene around you? What are people doing? Most people, as I said earlier, are absolutely aghast. I mean, there's, there's, are they running? Are no they? one's running. No, I'm not close enough at this point to be seeing that. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be showered with debris from my position here. I'm too far north of it, but I have a bird's eye view of what's happening. And this is what the route that I'm on is the is the emergency route right now. So all of the emergency vehicles are streaming past us. But as I was looking up, I saw the entire explosion. It looked exactly like the first two. Unbelievable, and everyone who watched it around me screamed. It was just a, a, a chorus of, oh my God, from everyone standing around. I'm, I'm, in, I'm walking, so what I'm hearing are a lot of people whose cars are parked, who've got their radios tuned to the local news stations and trying to catch up on, on just exactly what's happening. But now I'm seeing people running. But I don't think it has that. No, I really don't think that they're running from the area. We're too far away to be in, you know, in the direct line of any debris. But we certainly had the most perfect vantage point for that explosion. It was unbelievable. And the smoke now is, is so thick. It's just incredible. And we can see from our picture here, Ashley, uh, and our picture, well, we've gotten it back, but there is a huge cloud of smoke virtually enveloping the downtown area of Manhattan. That is the Wall Street area. It is in the Battery Park City, lower Manhattan. A series now of three explosions, two planes, uh, first, one flew into one tower of the Twin Towers, then a second, some minutes later, and just moments ago, a third explosion in the area of the World Trade Center. In addition, let's bring you up to date, there was an explosion at one of the Twin Towers has collapsed. That was the explosion. It apparently was not a third independent explosion. It was not a bomb. It was not a plane. But there has been a collapse of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. You are talking about a 110-story building. Uh, on any given day, as many as uh, 100,000 people can be there in their offices or visiting uh, the World Trade Center. It is one of the most uh, visible sites on the skyline of New York City. It is a main center of commerce, and there has apparently been a collapse of one of the two towers of the World Trade Center. This may be one of the worst tragedies ever to strike this country. One of the World Trade Centers having been struck by a plane in an apparent terrorist attack has now collapsed. You are talking about a 1,377 foot skyscraper, uh, 110 stories high. And judging by the debris and smoke that you are seeing there, 
it is now abundantly clear that the reports we are getting may well be true that one of the Twin Towers has collapsed. The other one continues to burn. The Pentagon also struck, apparently by a terrorist attack, another airplane that hit it. Uh, the there is a series of evacuations we should report about. The White House has been evacuated. The Capitol building has been evacuated. The Pentagon has been evacuated. And the Sears, that is a look at the Pentagon right now. And you can see the efforts to put out the flames that were caused when a plane flew into the Pentagon, one of the largest, or, or did, did Mick say it was the largest it office is building the largest in the United States? In miles the world. and miles of corridors. Uh, in addition, obviously, um, so is, for that matter, the World Trade Center and now the Sears Tower in Chicago being evacuated as well. You heard uh, from one of our experts that we had on the phone a little earlier that if it was a single attack, then you could point to any of a number of terrorist organizations with the facilities, with the wherewithal uh, to pull this off. And President Bush said earlier, it does appear that America has been the focus of apparent terrorist attacks. However, when you're talking about a series of coordinated attacks in New York and in Washington, D.C., there may be only one or two terrorist organizations with the kind of money and the organization and the aggressiveness to do something like this. And certainly one of the first places that the FBI will be looking at is Osama bin Laden. Chris, we now know which of the Twin Towers has apparently collapsed. It is the second one. A portion of the second tower uh, that was hit by a terrorist hijacked airplane has collapsed onto the street below. A huge plume of smoke is obscuring the Twin Towers, which is why we couldn't tell which one of the buildings, but it is the if you recall the videotape, and perhaps we can play it again, of the second plane crashing into the second tower, which we watched live on television, it is that tower, apparently, according to the best information we are now getting, that has uh, crashed and collapsed onto the streets below. It is 110 stories high, 1,377. We are now going to play the collapse of that building. And there you see the second number two World Trade Center collapsing into the ground. This follows a series of attacks on both towers of the Twin Towers complex. One plane first into one tower. A short time later, a second plane, apparently both hijacked, flying deliberately into the second tower. And then some time later, this is the view from across the river. This is New Jersey. And across the Hudson River, you can see that the entire World Trade Center area, the Wall Street area, center of commerce for the United States and the world is enveloped in clouds of smoke. We heard from our Ashley Banfield that police have been clearing the streets. There have been emergency vehicles rushing to the scene. We have no reports at this point of how extensive uh, the, the deaths or injuries may be, but our Rick Sanchez is on the scene in Manhattan. Uh, Rick, tell us exactly where you are and what you're able to see. We are now right off of Canal, approximately um, two blocks from there, three blocks from the scene as we look at it. And it certainly would be fair at this point, Chris, to say that there is a, a, a sense of, of, of panic among some of the people here in this community. People are running from the scene with tears in their eyes, some of them extremely distraught about what's going on. Uh, moments ago, I had a chance to talk to uh, a, a hardened mechanic who works in this area who uh, is himself uh, choked up about what he has uh, witnessed here uh, from his storefront when uh, I believe the second plane hit. Uh, Brian is with us here. Chris, I'm going to let you talk to him so you get a chance to uh, get a feel for what the people in this area actually saw as the plane hit the building. 
Okay, Brian, thanks very Chris much. Uh, hi, it's Chris, hi, Chris Dancing. Brian, Brian. Tell, tell us what I you saw. saw. The, uh, actually, I heard the first explosion, turned around and looked, and I saw the back of the building blown right out. Apparently, the first plane had hit the, hit the south side, blew out the, uh, the north side. Uh, I was watching it, and I, then I saw the second plane come across the river about 200 feet off the ground and smash into the second building. It was devastating, it really was. And what was the reaction of people who were around you, Brian? Well, at that point, people were being evacuated all over the place. People are still passing by when I shop. There's some people crying, there's some people just walking fast, uh, desperately trying to make phone calls. I've left my phone in my office here to probably 100 people so far so they can make calls. The cellulars aren't getting through very easily. And it's just horrible. There's nothing but, uh, you know, chaos going on. Uh, the second building got hit, got hit about halfway up the side of the building, and it just collapsed about five minutes ago. So from about, I don't know how many floors up, it collapsed across the street, across West Street. Were and you able to feel the I shock? saw the collapse. I saw the smoke. And God knows how many firemen just got killed down there. Uh, tell me about the emergency efforts, because on any given day at 9 o'clock in the morning when these attacks first happened, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, the streets of Lower Manhattan, which is the Wall Street area, would be teeming. They would be uh, Well, they actually got under traffic. control and cleared up pretty They were quickly. able to clear things out pretty easily. Emergency vehicles way, yeah. have been able to get through. Oh, yeah. They've been coming down and down and down, yeah. And, and what are people doing now where you are? There's still people passing my shop, walking up town. All the buildings around the World Trade Center have been evacuated, and all these people are just walking past my shop. Some yeah. kids are crying, the school's being evacuated, and everything. Tell us a little bit about that area directly where you are, Brian. What do you need to know? Uh, I'm, I'm one block south of Canal Street on West Street. That's between Watts and Desprosis. And this Probably is near, this is near the Chinatown area of New York City. No, we're on the west side. The Chinatown's more east. Okay, you're on the west side. Right. And um, this is a largely commercial area, residential? Well, it's commercial. Yeah, there is some residential going down at Rebecca area, but down where the explosion happened, it's commercial. Could you hold one second? I have to take a call. Absolutely. Me, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Brian, who was here. a witness. Rick. To update what yeah, is... Uh, stay with us, Rick, if you will. Okay. What appears to be the most deadly and devastating terrorist attack ever against this nation has just occurred in the last hour and a half. Uh, two planes struck the twin towers of the World Trade Center. The address of the Trade Center that has collapsed is One World Trade Center. There is the plane that struck it, and then about 35 to 40 minutes later, and we're gonna try to play that for you in just a moment, and here it is. One World Trade Center collapses. You can see it off to the left there of the tower to the right that was struck first. The Pentagon, also struck by a plane, a terrorist attack. Uh, it has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated after the Secret Service received a credible th threat of a terrorist attack against the presidential mansion and the residence. The President of the United States alerted to what happened immediately, got on a plane, and is on his way back aboard Air Force One to Washington, D.C. And the Pentagon has been evacuated. All flights in the United States have been stopped. Those planes that are in the air are to go to their destinations. No planes are allowed uh, to take off. And to uh, New York City is essentially shut down. Uh, we want to go back over to Lester Holt, uh, who has been following the aviation aspects of this for us. Lester, what can you tell us? First of all, I'm just getting word from uh, NBC's Joe Johns on Capitol Hill reporting, and I'm going to emphasize the word possible, a possible explosion on one side of the Capitol. Tell me again the side he's reporting. Chris? Well, tell me what side of the Capitol is he saying? Joe Johns reporting a possible explosion on the west side of the Capitol, unconfirmed. While we try to confirm that, we have confirmed one of the airplanes involved in the Trade Center uh, explosions. American Airlines confirming. Okay, we're also hearing uh, there are military jets now patrolling the D.C. area, presumably interceptors. American Airlines is confirming that its Flight 11 from Boston Logan to Los Angeles was involved in one of the World Trade Center explosions. That flight uh, was scheduled to leave Boston at 7.45 a.m., would have arrived in uh, Los Angeles at 11 o'clock local time in L.A. Flight 11 is scheduled to be a Boeing 767. That is a twin-aisled, wide-body airplane capable of holding as many 
as 250 people. Again, American Airlines confirming that one of its planes from Logan to LAX, Flight 11, was involved in one of the explosions we saw at the World Trade Center. We don't know if it's the one we have on video, the one where you actually see the plane uh, flying into the World Trade Center, but that's our first confirmation of a particular flight. Also, uh, there was word um, uh, U.S. officials with access to intelligence say it appears it was a third plane that hit the Pentagon. Now, I'm not clear if they're talking about the, the two at the World Trade Center than a third, but uh, in fact, they are now saying it was an airplane that struck the Pentagon, as you see in this picture here. Uh, we're still waiting. Any word from Joe Johns? Okay, we're still waiting for more confirmation from Joe Johns about a report of an explosion on the west side of the U.S. Capitol. Now, the fact that they have shut down airports worldwide, if you are a fan of techno thrillers, you have read this story, no doubt, many times before, but this is reality. This is not a, not a techno thriller. This is a, a America apparently under attack as we look at this live picture of smoke billowing out of what is left, what was the Twin Towers of, of Lower Manhattan, New York City. Uh, at the same time, the Pentagon uh, being evacuated, uh, we can punch up a live picture. You can see people uh, uh, near the bottom of your screen there above the breaking news banner. You can see people uh, continuing to billow out of that area, people leaving the area of the apparent uh, attack. NBC's uh, Rick Sanchez is in lower Manhattan covering the Trade Center attacks. Rick, what do you have? Well, the very latest, Lester, is uh, a, a scene that's being described by some of the police officers who are scurrying about trying to get uh, some sense of control in this area. Uh, they are saying that people have now started to jump out of the buildings, uh, some of them uh, in the areas, of course, where there is uh, heavy smoke and fire that they have had uh, no way of getting to them and that they have witnessed uh, people uh, jumping from the buildings, uh, a story that's also been told uh, to us by uh, some of the people in this area just off of Canal Street. We're about uh, four or five blocks uh, away from the scene, and uh, what you have is a steady flow of people, uh, some of them running, some of them uh, jogging, others walking briskly uh, away from uh, the World Trade Center, uh, many of them with tears in their eyes, uh, many telling stories, and some uh, just downright distraught and, and screaming as they, as they just try and get as far away from the scene uh, as they po possibly can. The, uh, the closer you get to the scene, uh, the more you see uh, what can only be described as, as carnage by uh, many of those uh, even hardened uh, investigators, hardened police officers uh, that we have had a chance to, to talk to. Uh, moments ago, we got off. Uh, the only way, to, most access, by the way, has been shut down to this area, all the subways and uh, all the other uh, transit has been shut down to this area. Uh, we came in by uh, using, uh, by, by essentially asking someone to drive us into this area, and we've just gotten off uh, moments ago. We're off of uh, Canal Street as we uh, start to talk to some of the people in this area, who Lester can only be described as being in shock right now. Rick, uh, we know it's very difficult for folks to get calls into and out of Manhattan. I, I was able to fortunately speak to my wife, who was dropping the kids not too far of the World Trade Center for school. They are okay, but we can imagine folks watching these pictures that we've been seeing, wondering about their loved ones and having great difficulty uh, getting uh, phone calls in and out. These all, are I can tell you, all I can tell you right now, uh, as far as that is concerned, Lester, I talked to one police officer, uh, and they say what they're going to try and do is just evacuate the area, get people out of this area uh, as soon as they possibly can. Their next step is to somehow try and cordon off or close the roads, but they really haven't had a chance to do that because they're dealing with the, the, the buildings uh, themselves at this point. Uh, I am told that most of the schools and most of the buildings in this area, even within like a 10-block radius, have also been been closed and people are being told essentially to try and get out of the area as carefully as they possibly can. I heard I heard noises out there now. What sounded like a megaphone. I'm not concerned. I'm not confirming that that's what I hear, but it sounds like police might be using some type of audio device to try and. Uh, Rick, get I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Want to let our viewers know that you are watching uh, live NBC News coverage of a series of attacks that have targeted Washington D.C. and New York City, the Trade Center. This is uh, in New York. This is taped just in uh, turned around. Uh, from ground level of the Pentagon, where apparently another plane has been driven uh, into part of the Pentagon. We have no casualty figures right now, but you can see the steady stream of people uh, leaving the Pentagon, evacuating. As you may well know, the Pentagon is a series of rings inside rings inside rings, uh, a huge building, and an enormous number of people to evacuate. This attack uh, occurring after 9 o'clock East Coast time, so folks were clearly uh, at their desk at work at the Pentagon when this occurred. Uh, back to the situation in New York right now. We have on the telephone with us Will Femia. He is with MSNBC.com, our web partner. Uh, Will, can you tell me what you have seen and, and describe what's going on now? 
Wolf Amy, are you with us? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Go ahead, sir. Okay, great. I started watching uh, at the second explosion. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm, a, I'm about a few blocks south of the towers, and uh, my wife called to say that there had been the first explosion, so I ran out, I looked out my window, and the street was full of people all looking up and, like, pointing and just staring. Um, and and uh, let's see, when the second one... When the second plane came, it was like a like a long rumble, like I, like you could hear it, like it sounded like thunder coming, coming. And then the, I heard the explosion. And I look up, I saw the building across the street from me. Its lights just sort of dipped and and went out and came back up again. And I and I looked up at the tower and just saw this huge plume of flame and smoke shoot out with like debris, like ticker tape parade quantities of debris, like just the sky filled with little pieces of bits. And it was coming down, uh, and and when that happened, the people on the street the street just turned and were like running, screaming, uh, and uh, uh, then slowly the people started to come back. Uh, uh, Rick was right about the uh, the uh, the people use, the police using audio. I just heard them go down my street as well. Uh, I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. Probably uh, telling us to leave. Um, Will, have you seen any any signs of casualties? As we and, and I want to let folks know, we're looking at a live picture now. This is along the west side, Howard, the west side of the uh, trade towers there. Uh, in fact, Pat Dawson is is doing a live report on the network side. Let's uh, listen into Pat now. And they could barely breathe as they came back. The smoke and the dust, as you can imagine, uh, from such a collapse was extraordinary. Uh, basically, at this point, what we can report to you is probably what you have heard, and that is that the two World Trade Centers, each of these two towers here in New York City, have been struck by aircraft. It is, according to the President of the United States, an apparent act of terrorism. Right down here, we cannot tell you much more in terms of specific information other than to say that there are probably, at this stage, I would say hundreds, perhaps in the thousands, of emergency workers who in the last hour and a half have managed to work their way down here to lower Manhattan. Uh, and basically try to get into this fray. They are, we are standing right here about 10 to 12 blocks north of the World Trade Center. These fire, uh, firemen that you can see, firefighters, firefighters are walking down towards the site now and they literally have been arriving by the dozens over the past hour or so. Uh, as we say, probably in excess of a thousand or more uh, emergency workers from New York City and surrounding areas converging on this site now to try to make some sense of it. As you can imagine, at this point, there is a certain level of chaos because they're just trying to sort out who's alive, who's not. We did speak to, as I said before, some of the emergency workers. They are police officers from the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, that is the organization that has jurisdiction over those two buildings specifically, as well as bridges and tunnels. Uh, I spoke to two of them who were actually down there when that building collapsed. They said that they speculate that the loss of life had to be horrific, that there were not that many people down there on the streets at that point, that most of them who had been evacuated, that is civilians, but on the other hand, they said that there were literally hundreds of emergency workers who were down at that end. They have no idea the level of loss of life at this point. Uh, when I asked one of them why he was going back in as he suited up since he could barely breathe, he said, it's my job. And they may be, there may be some of my brother officers in there. There may be other people in there. So those officers going in here, as you can see, all kinds of fire workers going in there, literally in the thousands now converging on this site. We cannot give you much of an organizational sense beyond telling you probably what you already know, which is that two separate aircraft have struck the two towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, if memory serves, uh, I think each of those towers stands 110 stories. Uh, some of the dust, as you can probably see now, is blowing in our faces. It just really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we're enveloped in some of the dust and the smoke. Uh, as you can see from these pictures, uh, the amount of dust from the fire that's still burning, uh, flames and ash, is extraordinary at this point. Uh, and at least a few emergency workers have said that they really aren't so sure that other tower won't stay up now. Uh, they really didn't think the first one was capable of coming down, but it did. Uh, and so they're basically saying, keep back as far as you can. On the other hand, facing that danger, as we have been telling you, many, many hundreds of these workers are heading over those lines down towards that burning building to try to rescue those people 
uh, who are in there, uh, be they emergency workers, be they civilians. The original crash took place just about quarter to nine, by my reckoning. Uh, I don't know the exact time, but about quarter to nine. And when that took place, obviously at that hour, the building would not be packed with people, but it's still late enough in the morning that there would be enough people uh, that there would be enough people on those floors that the loss of life and certainly the injuries would likely be extraordinary. What you are looking up now, looking at now is a close-up of the enormous hole in the side of that building. Uh, that is exactly what happens when a plane hits the side of the World Trade Center. Uh, the uh, only time that we really have any kind of comparative experience as to how to do this, uh, rather how to uh, uh, compare it to, I suppose, is in 1945, a B-25, an Army B-25, just at the end of World War II, crashed into the Empire State Building, and that caused, uh, obviously, a great deal of damage, but it happened at night, so the loss of life was not that bad. That's uh, Pat uh, Dawson uh, reporting from outside the World Trade Center. You see the live picture smoke continuing to billow from the upper floors. We have just received word that... Uh, all inbound international flights to the United States are being diverted to Canada. The government will not allow them to land here in the U.S. They are being diverted to Canada. As we've been reporting, uh, all airports in the U.S. have shut down uh, departures. We were watching on our flight explorer. I don't know if we can put it on the air right now. This is a system in which we can actually look at the number of airplanes in the air. Normally, this would be dotted with little blue airplane figures. Look at how few we're looking. It looks like only three over the immediate New York City metropolitan area, just a handful. Airplanes in the air are being allowed to land at their destinations, and then that is it. Now, keep in mind, the planes you're looking at here are only those that are participating in the FAA radar system, airliners. Uh, this is, does not include uh, anybody in a small Cessna or a small plane who might be flying uh, what's called VFR traffic, where they're just uh, uh, flying below the commercial traffic. But again, these represent commercial airplanes or airplanes that are participating in the FAA system, just a handful in the skies over the Northeast right now. Greg, Chris? watching continuing NBC News coverage on MSNBC of a series of apparent terrorist attacks on the United States. First, two planes crashing into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers in lower Manhattan just minutes apart this morning. And again, what President Bush said was an apparent terrorist attack sometime later. Uh, Twin Tower number one, World Trade Center number one, as it is known, collapsed. Within the hour, an aircraft crashed into a, a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon, and the west wing of the White House was evacuated, among other places. The Pentagon has been evacuated, the White House, the Capitol, the Sears Tower in Chicago, and you see the billowing smoke that continues to come out of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. Joining us on the phone, Dr. Angelo Caprio. He is at St. Mary's Hospital in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is across the river from Manhattan. And a doctor, as I understand it, you... Well, let's go to WNBC coverage first. State Department officials and the White House officials and the NSC have all been evacuated as well, although Condi Rice was earlier in the Situation Room, and CIA Director George Tenet has been holding meetings in his office in Langley, Virginia. And as we reported earlier, key FBI team members from their rescue efforts and anti-terror coordinating team were stranded in Monterey, California, where they were on a secret uh, secret. Uh, exercise, military exercise, right. against exactly this kind of event. Andrew, have to, yes, Andrew sir, let me interrupt for a second. Can you tell us any more about reports we're getting that a car bomb has exploded? And so you heard uh, NBC's Andrea Mitchell expanding the number of evacuations in Washington, D.C., uh, the NSC and the State Department as well. As I told you, we have Dr. Angelo Caprio on the phone from St. Mary's Hospital in Hoboken, New Jersey. Doctor, I know it's extremely busy. What can you tell us about any casualties you're receiving there? We're receiving some minor burns now. We have a three emergency rooms in our hospital system, one here at St. Mary's, one at St. Francis, and one at Christ Hospital in Jersey City, and we're open and functioning to receive any casualties that we may get. You are directly across the river from uh, Midtown Manhattan. Have you ever in your experience gotten uh, any of these types of uh, casualties from, from New York? It w it, what kind of emergency plan is in place that would include we, New Jersey hospitals? I, I don't know what kind of emergency plan they have in place. We have our external disaster plan in place. We sent triage teams to the PATH station uh, Hoboken Terminal. And as I said, we have our three emergency rooms open and running. 
Dr. Angelo Caprio, thank you very much you're, uh, you're again quite uh, from around the New York City metropolitan region. Help is pouring in after the attack on the Twin Towers. And we believe now the second of Tower of the World Trade Center, that would be Tower Number Two, has collapsed. This, this is a terrible, terrible tragedy. The first. Uh, one collapsed just a short time ago. This now appears to be the second of the Twin Towers, having been struck, each of them, by a plane, has collapsed. Let's listen. In the area, there are firefighters and there are police trying to evacuate the area as quickly as possible. People who are near the area are in an absolute frenzied situation. The entire top of the building just collapsed. You can see the plume of smoke is coming in our direction. Let's get out of here, Ralph. We're going to leave because the smoke is coming right at us. Obviously, this is a devastating They're moment. Gone. Look at that. The World Trade Center is, is no more. What we do trauma. not know at this point. What has happened uh, in Lower Manhattan almost unfathomable. An apparent terrorist attack. Two planes deliberately crashed, we believe, into the twin towers of the World Trade Center. Now, these are pictures from just moments ago. Earlier, oh. one World Trade Center collapse. Now you can see the collapse of the second tower. It is almost incomprehensible to believe that these two 110 story towers, there you see it, just collapsing into the ground, are no longer part of the skyline of Manhattan. And there were huge numbers of emergency workers who were rushing to the scene uh, to deal with the injured in that area from the first two initial explosions and then of course the collapse of the first of the World Trade Center towers now with the second collapse here again is the tape just moments ago the collapse of the World Trade Center tower number two these are 110 stories high, roughly 1,377 foot skyscrapers, two of the defining characteristics of the Manhattan skyline. Uh, they are no more, and one can scarcely comprehend the loss of life of all of the people uh, who perhaps were not lucky enough to scramble out of these buildings when they were first attacked by hijacked plane shortly before 9 o'clock this morning in an apparent terrorist attack against America. And uh, there you see the second tower coming down. The Twin Towers are gone now. And too, we should tell you, there is the Pentagon. The Pentagon was also struck uh, by a, what we believe to be a hijacked plane. It has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. The nation's Capitol building has been evacuated. Congressional leaders have reportedly been taken to a secure location. Here again is the number two tower of the World Trade Center come crashing down to the ground in a horrific scene of destruction wrought by a terrorist attack on America. Uh, before that tower collapsed, an eyewitness said it had become so desperate that he saw people literally jumping out the windows of that tower to their death. When the initial plane attack occurred, another eyewitness said bodies were falling to the ground from the upper levels of this 110-story structure. The scene that you are viewing is from the opposite side of the Hudson River. Uh, the Twin Towers sit on the lower end of Manhattan, uh, virtually in uh, the southernmost tip of Manhattan, uh, not far off from uh, where people are familiar with the Statue of Liberty. This is a highly populated area during the daytime. It is the Wall Street area of Manhattan, and uh, this is the view from across the river in New Jersey. President uh, George W. Bush called this a national tragedy. He said he had spoken to the director of the FBI and ordered that the full resources of the federal government go to help victims and their families and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and try to find those folks who committed this act. 
He further said, terrorism against our nation will not stand. Experts will tell you that there are very few terrorist organizations that could pull off a series of coordinated attacks against the United States, chief among them, the terrorist network of Osama bin Laden. There had been an alert last Friday uh, warning uh, the Pentagon and the State Department of an imminent terrorist attack, in particular Osama bin Laden, uh, the well-known terrorist uh, who has struck so many times before, who has been uh, indicted for the killings of some 200 people. And as we watch the World Trade Center yet again, the second tower come tumbling down in a scene of uh, unbelievable destruction, one can only imagine the number of people who just then just now, as we're watching it moments ago, lost their lives. You're watching continuing NBC News coverage on MSNBC. We are hearing from the Federal Aviation Administration, which has shut down air traffic over the skies of the United States, uh, that reports that there was a hijacked plane heading to Washington, D.C., are unfounded. The FAA, after these initial two attacks, the two planes that hit the twin towers of the World Trade Center, shut down air traffic over the United States, although they did allow uh, planes that were currently en route to land. John Zito is an MSNBC producer. He lives in Lower Manhattan. He's on the phone with us now. John, where are you and what can you see? Uh, I can't see much. I can't see more of about uh, three feet in front of my face. All the debris and soot from the second um, tower is just showering down. Um, there's paper and just black soot. Um, I'm outside a bank, and a bunch of people are inside in the lobby taking cover. Where exactly are you in relation to where the Twin Towers stood, John? I'm about, I'd say, 15 to 20 blocks away. I'm at the Bowling Green subway station. I know that doesn't mean much to people who aren't from New York, but it's in the downtown area. A very popular place where a lot of commuters come in and out. Now, obviously, listen, I, I, the most important thing is that you stay safe, John, and that uh, you get to an area where you feel um, that you may be most secure. Uh, were you able to feel the collapse of that second tower? The second tower, no, but the first tower that went down, I was very close, I'd say about five blocks away, and CNBC's Ron and Sana and I were trying to hook up with the truck or find any NBC contact down there and we were very close when that tower came down and the debris came showering down and Ron and I both ran for cover. I managed to get inside an alcove of building and all the scaffolding around collapsed in front of me and broke the window next to me and I climbed inside that and stayed in there for about 10 minutes. Um, I couldn't get out of there. It was pitch black outside and I haven't... Uh... Hold up. I'm all right. You're okay, John? I'm okay. Okay. Uh, Actually, I'm being ushered out of here right now. Um, they're sending me inside the building. And who is doing that? Are, are police on the scene? Uh, and Hello? The, John, are police on the scene? Who is, uh, who is moving you? It was a New York City police officer, and he's just sort of gone his way and left me now. But I'm the only one on the street at the moment. You're the only one on the street. Well, well, John, obviously, get to a safe place, but w tell us, is the smoke starting to clear? Are you, be, are you able to see anything more at this point? And, and, and uh, literally, the, the streets you, are I'm, deserted? I'm, I'm standing across the street, um, and I'm staring at uh, you know, a, a walk, don't walk, blinking sign. And so the street could be, it couldn't be more than, what, 10 yards across? I can barely make out the uh, blinking don't walk. Let's John, to, hold on right, right there. Thank you. Let's go to uh, WNBC, NBC's Pat Dawson, who Fireman. is downtown. Let's listen. We're trying to run past us. In fact, our cameraman even put one of the captains in his car and drove him down to a command post. The people you see here are pretty much all emergency workers. Many of them that I have seen in the last two to three minutes, quite frankly, are coming out of here. And remember this, these are professionals. They're coming out of there looking literally stunned, in shock, many of them, struggling for breath, obviously in serious distress. Breathing problems are the biggest problem for those who manage to make it safely out of that area down below us. You can't see much more than a block south of me right now. And the World Trade Center probably stands about 10 blocks south of where I am at this moment. 
And as you can see now, the dust is beginning to pick up here. It really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we get heavy dust or not. But at this point, I can tell you that in the first few minutes, emergency workers were trying just basically to get out of there, to survive. You could see that written in their faces. The situation was so desperate, they just wanted to get out of there. Now, many of them are beginning to regroup. A couple of them asked me where their commander might be. They're trying to get together and go back in there and try to take care of the people who obviously are in serious trouble. There's no other way to describe it. The language here, uh, at times, if I slip into language which seems a little melodramatic, uh, forgive me, but this is uh, a circumstance which uh, uh, is very, very difficult to describe in many ways without sounding melodramatic. Certainly in more than 20 years of, of covering horrific events, this is something that I've never seen before. Um, as we say, the emergency workers now beginning to try to gather themselves. Over there you can see a police emergency service unit. Uh, they are trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. Certainly that picture tells it all. Many of them just happy to be alive at this point, uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. As we said earlier in our report, 110 stories each. Uh, I will tell you that what fell, what I saw fall, had to be at least 40, 50 stories of that building at first. The skeleton was left at about, I would say, the 50 or 60th floor after the shell, after the uh, structure of the building fell down. The, uh, the skeleton, the steel skeleton, was literally sheaved off, and it took probably about another 30 seconds before the skeleton collapsed into the street. That was the last Let's break away from uh, Pat Dawson, Trade if we can, Center. for a moment. Lester Holt here at MSNBC World Headquarters from the Associated Press, Dateline Pittsburgh. Large plane crashes in western Pennsylvania's. Uh, they're citing officials at the Somerset County Airport who confirm it. Again, AP reporting and citing the Somerset County Airport. A large plane crashes in western Pennsylvania. That is all we have. This comes uh, um, quite a time after the FAA uh, put essentially a ground stop. All airplanes in the air were allowed to continue to their destinations, but every uh, commercial air airport in the, in the country right now is closed. Uh, but again, uh, the news just gets worse and worse. A large plane crashing in western Pennsylvania. Uh, NBC's Ashley Banfield is in lower Manhattan, the scene of the chaos that you're watching unfold live. Ashley, what have you learned? What can you see? Uh, I don't know how to describe this. I don't know what to tell you first. But when, that's, when that building came down, we were a couple of blocks. Are you all right? And I'm fine, thank you. Are you okay? I, I, an incredible cloud of of debris and smoke completely engulfed us. We couldn't breathe. We we broke a, we broke down the door to a building just to get out just to get out from the cloud. We, we couldn't breathe. To, thank you. No, we couldn't breathe. We couldn't see. It was pitch black. Just going into a a corner restaurant that's allowing us. And it was as though. It was, I swear I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. This whole place looks like a war zone. There's debris everywhere. It's hard to breathe. And when that cloud came at us, I could feel it, the, the force of it. And I, it was as though, I mean, an instinct took over. We just had to breathe. And we, Ashley, we're going we're gonna to let you collect yourself. All right. Obviously, the priority to anyone who was watching in the New York City area, stay safe. Uh, Ashley, uh, get to safety. We will talk to you in a bit. We want to get to uh, Pat Dawson again, who is on the west side of the Trade Center, who was uh, covering the scene from there. At least a dozen emergency workers this morning, police and fire. The loss of life, uh, in the words of one, has to be terrible. There's just no, simply no way around it. Uh, and that... Obviously, uh, if we start just with the people who are on those two planes. Uh, the, uh, the other thing which we have seen this morning, which uh, we rarely if ever see here uh, on the island of Manhattan, that is we have been circled several times by Army, by Air Force jets. Uh, we assume they are Air Force uh, going overhead at, uh, I would say, probably about 10 to 12,000 feet. Uh, obviously, uh, at this point, New York's airspace is closed. And I think I'm being, it's being pointed out to me now that, uh, is that what you see, another plane there? No. 
Okay. I'm sorry. You can see the towers. You can see the towers now from where you're standing. Yeah, actually, that's that's the building just in front. I don't know if in the in the uh, television picture you can see through it, uh, and I'm not sure that that building that we can see there is actually the World Trade Center or the building that is just a block north of it. Uh, but that's just now we are getting our first view, probably for the America that we know we have yet to become. That is what this race is about. That America, and these are not just words, that America is a land of opportunity, not just for some, but for all. It's a nation respected in the world, not just for its missiles and its military might, but for the power of our ideals. We reject the view that a president's job is just to raise the value of the stock market. We believe the job of a president is to put America back to work and to do it now. We, we will insist on worker protections, on labor rights, on environmental rights in every trade agreement because given a fair playing field, which is what they deserve, there is no one in the world that the American worker can't compete against. And we will give that fair playing field to workers across our country. We will hold up the tax code of our country, your tax code, to the full light of democracy and accountability. And we will close every loophole, every reward, every benefit that actually entices some Benedict Arnold company or CEO to exploit the tax code and send American jobs and money overseas. We will end that for this nation. Instead, what we intend to do is provide new incentives for manufacturing, creating the jobs here at home, and providing the rewards not for those who take the jobs overseas, but the rewards should go to those good companies that create the good jobs here at home. And that's what we will do. And I, I will tell you, let me tell you what we will outsource. We will outsource George Bush's unaffordable tax cut for the wealthiest Americans so we can invest in health care and education in this country. And we will create, and we will create, 500,000 new jobs by moving towards energy independence, clean energy, alternative and renewables in our land so that no young American in uniform will ever be held hostage to America's dependence on oil from the Middle East.